And can I um, begin by just correcting something there? Um, cranes in the sky. I was health minister. We did a lot of building at Frankston Hospital. New wings, new ED, and there were cranes there. So I'm sorry, not correct. Um, I'm happy to take responsibility for those cranes as the previous government obviously is. So let's get um, real about, you. what's your doubt that there were cranes there? I can tell you. Um, let me also note the Springvale level crossing removal. Which is new cranes. I know, that's correct. It's not, no, we're quite aware of that. But um, let me just say that the performance of the Frankston line has deteriorated since the change of government in November 2014. There are more cancellations, less punctual trains, less reliability than was the case in November 2014. That is true across almost all of the metropolitan system and it's also true across a lot of country Victoria as well. Um, the V-Line train system has actually deteriorated terribly and uh, tonight we see that the government is about to take over V-Line by putting the head of PTV in as the chair of that important V-Line service. I should um, also talk about the um, construction works along the line and it's important that we think about what is occurring here. Yes, there is development in the Frankston station. I don't see a car park that was promised and I just put that on the record squarely. Uh, secondly, as we go up the line, we note that um, whilst there have been level crossings removed and there's more to go there, there are a number of key issues. Why the elevated rail when that was not told to people before the election? They could have put in place trenches and a good outcome in terms of, the, um, of a rail under road solution. And that would have been the right thing to do, rather than to mislead and hoodwink the community. Now, I say uh, very clearly that as you move up that line, you hit other areas of trouble. Um, the Edith Vale and the Bond Beach crossings are important, and the government has said, um, in a half-hearted way, that it will do a trench solution there. But of course, there's an EES process going forward now, and I attended that the other day, to hear what is going to happen uh, with that process, and it's still not clear that that will be a trench and that the government will not build a sky rail um, up further along the coast. In Carrum, the impact is going to be severe, and at Cannonook, the loss of the seven businesses in that Cannonook business park and the um, Frankston Council makes it clear that industrial land is in short supply in your region and is a key uh, priority. So what is this government intending to do? It's intending to remove that industrial land at Cannonock to put stabling there. Uh, when there are options, the stabling could, could occur uh, with the extension of the line to Baxter and there are opportunities to put stabling at the Baxter end of the line. That would be a better solution it would be a cheaper solution, and it would be a solution that doesn't take away the business opportunities, Jayco and the other uh, firms that are going to be directly impacted in that process. 200 jobs is um, uh, the figure, and, I, and I, I think it is a significant impact on the local community. Eel Race Road, this is a level crossing removal with a difference. You remove a level crossing by simply closing it, and that is not what the community has sought in that case. The community has actually sought that the level crossing remain uh, open because they could actually get through rather than having to go a very long way around. So I, I make the point that in the case of um, Eel Race Road, this is a level crossing removal that the community are not happy about and we've certainly had that message through loud and clear to us and we've committed that we will reopen that crossing for that community. I should, um, I should also make the point that the Cannonall um, example is um, a, a very expensive one. There's about 180 million co committed for that uh, stabling. And now we find, because the government proceeded with its level crossing removals without proper planning, uh, that in fact another 49 million uh, is committed in this budget as a clean up for contamination on that site. So, um, you know, the auditor was very clear about the level crossing removal program. Uh, you did need to do a business case. He said, in his words, not mine, that it's risky to proceed without a business case. 
And in fact, that's what we've found. Whether it be the failure to look for the contamination or whether it be the fact that we're now billions of dollars over budget on the, um, on the level crossing uh, removal project. I should also indicate that there is a real fear, I think, with respect to buses. This government sought, um, before the 30th of June this year, and this was stared down, to nationalise all of the private bus companies, not only on the peninsula, uh, but all of metropolitan Melbourne. The bus companies were presented with a take it or leave it um, contract that said you will transfer over the course of the contract your bus assets, your depots, and all of your intellectual property. Now, we strongly supported the private bus operators, saying that actually you've got a right to exist. Many of them have been in existence for many decades, five, six, and seven decades in some cases. And the idea that you would forcibly acquire their assets in this way is simply bizarre. Now, the government has stepped back from that and finally signed contracts without that nasty clause in it. But make no mistake, they will, if they get the opportunity, seek to nationalise the buses um, statewide if they are re-elected in November. Um, now, we've also committed to a number of road projects that are important. Um, the, uh, on Western Port Highway, there are two intersections that will be removed, and that is a very, very important commitment because the the need is there to make sure that we, we can move traffic smoothly and those uh, outcomes I know have been fought for by our candidates on that um, Western Port Highway, Thompson's Road and so forth. I should acknowledge particularly the work of um, our candidates uh, um, in Frankston and Carrum and um, Nepean, but also Chris Cruther, the federal member, in advocating strongly for the Baxter Line extension. Uh, Chris has been successful in not only in getting funding from the federal government for the study that's needed, the business case, but also in getting the commitment of $255 million of federal money. That is a great outcome. Um, it provides a great base and it's an example of working collaboratively uh, with a national government that is actually interested in getting the outcome uh, for this community on the